more delegates arrive in WIWAC. John Mommy's farewells his good friend. And more support for Port Moresby General Hospital. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Saturday's news. We'll bring you our stories in the bulletin much later on, but first we cross over to WIWAC, where Scott Wadi is on standby. Now, Scott, what can we expect in WIWAC when the casket of the great of the Grand Chief arrives there tomorrow? Yes, thank you, Helen. Um, there'll be There'll be a lot of activities tomorrow with the arrival of the Grand Chief, Sir Michael Somare. Uh, he'll be accompanied by the Prime Minister and his wife, uh, Rachel Marape. Um, the Grand Chief will be given full military honours here at Boram Airport. He'll be welcomed by the uh, military here. Um, there'll also be an escort from here all the way to the Michael Somare Stadium in Wewak where the proceedings will happen. There'll be speeches. The Grand Chief over here will be welcomed by the Governor for East Sepik, Alan Bird, and other MPs, uh, as well as the Governor for West Sepik. They'll accompany the Grand Chief all the way to the stadium where proceedings will happen. Over the next two days, it's expected to be very busy. Uh, in WIWEC, there'll be uh, lots of people here. Lots of people have already begun traveling into WIWEC. Uh, a delegation from the Morabe province arrived, 200 people strong, um, with vehicles and cows. There's another delegation coming from Manus. Um, another delegation from Medang is expected. They're coming on banana boats uh, and they're expected by this afternoon in WIWEC. Thank you, Scott. The central provincial government delegation arrived today in WIWAC ahead of the Grand Chief's funeral service tomorrow. Governor Robert Agarobe said it is important for them to be there as Sir Michael went to school in Central and later spent most of his life on Central land and then passed away. Minister for Transport and Infrastructure and member for Golala William Sam is also part of the delegation. Um. We invited such senior citizens as um, Sir Philip Boraga, uh, Galeba Kwarara, Ila Geno, uh, General Ted Diro, um, Semoy Semoy, and Chief Polisa. We also invited uh, Sir John Guy's son to represent his, his father. Uh, regional guys and we had this as a uh, special assembly sitting so that we gave an opportunity also to all our assembly reps and our senior citizens to also pass their condolences um, to the Somare family and the people of Sipik as well and also to share the, the tribute so with that we also advised assembly and the people of Central Province that we were going to send a contingent down here so that we could pass on our gifts over here in Sipik and it's only fitting that uh, uh, as a province we come and uh, uh, witness his uh, burial and also convey uh, this uh, thank you for the uh, Central Province people to uh, <coughs> uh, the people of uh, East Sipik and the Greater Sipik region for uh, sharing their father and uh, who has now become our father and the great grand chief. Uh, uh, to Papua New Guinea, but bulk of his life, he uh, lived in Central Points and on Central Soil. More delegates arrived in WIWAC today to attend the funeral of the late Grand Chief Sir Michael Somari. Amongst those today were the Central Province Governor Robert Agarobe and Morbe Governor Gensan Saunu. A team from Manus arrived by boat at around 2 a.m. this morning. Other groups arrived during the week and more are expected to arrive tomorrow. More people have arrived in Wewek to attend the funeral of the late Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare. At noon today, a team from East New Britain arrived led by a senior member in the province, Dr. Jacob Simmet. Becoming sadness. 
would like to appease the people of this land for the children today for the next few days. They were received by the East Sipic Provincial Administrator, Dr. Clement Malau. Soon after, Morabe Governor Ginsen Saono arrived, accompanied by one of PNG's founding fathers and colleague of the late Grand Chief, Seboyamo Sali. They arrived a day after the two marine vessels from Morabe arrived, loaded with people, official vehicles and food to present to the Somari family. Morabe's deputy governor, Willie Simbisi, said the late Sir Michael Somare has a special connection with Morabe and this is a way to share their sorrow. A big sorry to the kind leader, a founding father of Blondation. Morabe is a bell brook. I stay by looking more mama, Morabe or crying, only passing more mama yellow. We work. I'm so in bell, I'm like, come, I'm like, by looking more same. I'm like, carry Morabe and I'm like, Earlier this morning, Central Governor Robert Agarobe also flew into the province. We also confirmed that a team from Manus and Enga arrived just after midnight and more people are expected to arrive tomorrow. Even in death, Sana continues to unite a land of a thousand tribes. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, Wiwek. Papua New Guinea Navy's Lucky Kamu sailed into WeWAC today with more supplies to cater for the influx on guests and people who will be flooding into WeWAC in the coming days. They left Port Moresby on Tuesday with 20 portable toilets, two police motorcycles and two police traffic vehicles. The portable toilets will be set up throughout the stadium and town for hygiene purposes. The police vehicles to beef up police presence in the town. Navy personnel will also assist with security manpower as the program commences. The crowd in WeWAC is starting to build up with many people from East and West Sipic making their way into WeWAC ahead of the funeral program tomorrow. This has also caused major traffic congestion within the town area and stadium. The Highlands community in Wewak was one of many groups who visited the late Sir Michael Somare's house cry at the NBC compound this week. Their leader, Pastor Nathan Temane, paid tribute to the Grand Chief, saying Sir Michael will be remembered as a hero who fought against racial divides and segregation. On clubs, uh, buses, on restaurants. M1 Bla Hero Bla Yumi, he fought in those uh, times alone. And uh, Mibla Amumas, Islands Community, community Lo Yellow Wibig, Mibla Amumas, Lo Kam Lo Auskrai, and I saw him respect and sorry. And uh, Hano Long, one of the great leader, God raised him. Uh, long Mibla uh, people blow, Papua New Guinea. He's a real champion because Emmy uh, unite him, the thousand tribes, uh, more than 800 languages and cultures. And they embrace him, plant his sons and daughters, which I stand here as one of us, and all the Mibla in the Islands community. Mibla Pilim was a Mibla losing one, the true leader of Mibla. Was then a Mibla come, the way the Islands way, put him Grand Malamala, Spear, Bush Knife, Tamiok, and the Lili Kai Kai. Now, when the Lili contribution, a Mibla come was him. Now, ask him, Mibla. Watching National MTV News, we'll be back with more stories after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. John Momis was the deputy chairman of the Constitutional Planning Committee under the chairmanship of the late Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare. Yesterday he gave a brief history at the funeral of Sir Michael of how the two met and the work they did to create what he described as a constitution that is unique and made especially for a country so diverse in culture. John Momis, now retired, was a long-time politician and in 1972 was handpicked by the late Grand Chief Sir Michael Thomas Somare to lead PNG to independence through the Constitutional Planning Committee which finalized PNG's constitution. In 1972, John Caputin and I, who were contemporaries in school in Australia, were both elected to Parliament, and we met Sir Michael. And Sir Michael said to us, I think you people, I hope you were not brainwashed 
by our brothers in Australia and Kapudin Ito, Noga Tolgeta, Mipla Lorebolia. So he was very happy to recruit us and we became his close collaborators in developing a constitution which in the national goals and directive principles clearly talk about the kind of society, an egalitarian society, which the people of Papua New Guinea dreamt about. Momis, who spoke at the Grand Chief's funeral yesterday, was Sir Michael's deputy in the Constitutional Planning Committee. But the two founding fathers of the Constitution first met in 1965 back in Wiwek after church. My first encounter with Michael Thomas Samaria was outside the Wirui Catholic Cathedral in Wiwek after Sunday Mass, 1965. Ignatius Kilage from Simbu, Leo Hannett from Bowenville, Alexis Sare from Bowenville and myself were students at the Holy Spirit Seminary. Little did Momis and his colleagues know that the dinner invite by St. Michael was the start of collaborations towards charting a course for an independent Papua New Guinea. Of course, we accepted that with relish. He did not know us at all. And yet, he invited us to his home at the foot of Wewak Hill. Little did we know we would be collaborating. Kilage, Leo Hannett, Dr. Sare, myself, with other leaders of this country to not only talk about independence, but to actually prepare the mama law for this country. Mommis and his colleagues from the seminary knew well the issues faced by PNG under colonial rule and were very vocal through publications of their own. But Mommis did admit that unifying a diverse nation under so many challenges brought on by colonialists would be hard. At the seminary we had a newspaper, <clears throat> a student newspaper called Dialogue. In this newspaper we raised a lot of issues about the injustices by the colonial government, planters, and even the churches. We said the churches must recognize and accept that there is such a thing as human dignity, that people have rights. There was a lot of colonial race, racism, injustices, discrimination, and other issues that affected the lives of Papua New Guineans in such a highly diversified country that it was very difficult for anybody to even think of creating a United Nation. But it did happen, an independent Papua New Guinea with a unique constitution that stood on the five goals and directive principles, the very principles that were a collection of Papua New Guinea's views, with Samara at the helm of it all, guiding the canoe and brought together a unified nation into existence. For a highly diversified country such as ours, uniformity would not work. So, as you know, the second goal of the Constitution is equality and participation, which means giving the people of Papua New Guinea, in accordance with the principle of subsidiarity, some measure of autonomy, some measure of independence that would allow them to participate not only in governance, but also in development. And I think that is why 
the people of Papua New Guinea accepted independence. In the at the beginning, people were not very keen to have independence because the Highlanders, and I did not blame them, said if we become independent, all numbers man by by bossing you me. Well, he said, he white skin, all man by numbers that's all. Now I remember Sir Te Abal asking me, I was a priest then, he said, Padre, Somebody talk through and me trick him you me. Look at them, me trick him you mean, I sink him you mean, I meet. Then I said to him, no God. Somebody talk through. And me steer a man long cano belong you me. And to his sin long cano. You na me sin that long cano. You may get a sin that long cano. So as cano he go down, somebody too by go down. Now me talk, I'm straight. Me now me believe. Freely Sukina, National MTV News. And Chief John Momis will be our guest on tonight's special program, The Grand Chief, a tribute. That program starts straight after the news at 7 p.m. Possibly the largest public funeral event held for any prime minister in the history of Papua New Guinea. The Grand Chief Sir Michael Somara's state funeral, even in death, continues to unite a land of a thousand tribes. Sir Hubert Murray Stadium reached its full sitting capacity and still more people lined up outside wanting to see the arrival of the casket. The patriotic atmosphere resonated far throughout the event, more so for those who stood through during the sudden change of weather until the casket exited the stadium for the last time. Sir Michael's state funeral began as scheduled after the arrival of the casket into Sir Hubert Murray Stadium. Heavily escorted by a guard of honor as expected. Presiding over the mess, Cardinal Sir John Ribat performed the entrance right over the casket before advancing on to the start of the mess. As usual, a eulogy of the deceased is read out before the mess concludes. Sir Michael's daughter, Dalciana Somare Bresh, stood to highlight some of her father's best moments in life. Signs of farewell were done with the sprinkling of the holy water on the coffin, followed by a farewell song by the choir. These proceedings followed suit with the laying of rats. The tributes followed, but it took longer than expected. The sudden change in weather took its course with a heavy downpour, leaving everyone in the triage and stands drenched. It was after each and every one of the tributes were read that at around 6 p.m. the casket was loaded back into the hearse and later escorted out of Sir Hubert Murray Stadium for the last time by the PNG Defense Force. Standing by was a motorcade ready to escort the Grand Chief's casket back to the funeral home. According to the tentative program, today, 13th of March 2021, the Grand Chief's casket will rest at the family home. Tomorrow, Sunday, 14th March 2021, at 8.30 a.m., the casket will depart Port Mosby for Wewek, Isipik Province, where the provincial government will take over the final proceedings until the Grand Chief's burial. And at Cora, National MTV News. The Prince of Wales has sent his condolences for the passing of Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare through a message to Prime Minister James Marape. Prince Charles recalled his first visit to PNG in 1966 and in 1975 when he represented the Queen during PNG's independence celebrations. He described Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare as a wise elder who protected one of the planet's most precious assets, our rainforests, stating that without the Grand Chief's international efforts, the Coalition for Rainforest Nations would not exist. Further adding that Grand Chief Sir Michael's enduring legacy of peace and all that he received, achieved rather with the Coalition for the Rainforest Nations will be maintained by generations to come. He and his wife, the Duchess of Cornwall, expressed profound sympathy to the people of Papua New Guinea during this time of mourning. 
More than 60 schools in Leh hosted their final respect and tributes to the Grand Chief Sir Michael Somara yesterday to end the two weeks mourning period declared by the national government. All students from elementary, primary and secondary schools dressed in black to show their last respects to the Grand Chief. The schools held special programs including the laying of wreaths, poems and posters of Sir Michael. One of the schools is Omili Primary School with a population of over 2,000 students. Students. Some employees and members of the general public also joined the schools to remember the founding father. As of Wednesday, 10th March, 84 new cases of COVID-19 were reported, bringing the total number of COVID-19 cases in PNG to 1,819. The total confirmed number of deaths remains at 21. 72 of those new cases were reported in the National Capital District. The isolation ward for patients with coronavirus disease 2019 at the Port Moresby General Hospital is full, and many hospital staff are among the many already sick with COVID-19. Longtime staff and senior gynecologist at the hospital, Professor Glenn Moller, has posted on social media appealing to the people to listen and take heed of the health measures in the new Plapassin, saying the hospital COVID-19 ward is full. Professor Moller said in the maternity wing alone, 20% of women presenting with pregnancy problems or are in labour are testing positive with COVID-19. Furthermore, he said while health workers are attending to patients, they themselves are getting infected with COVID-19. Last week, 10 of them had to be isolated and if this trend continues, it could lead to serious problems such as the closure of the hospital which, lead, which will lead to chaos. Similar comments by other hospital staff were made, including those at the accident and emergency who said the cases being seen are more serious than what they saw last year. Of the 84 new cases, 72 are from the National Capital District. The other 12 cases were reported from Morbe with two, East New Britain with one Eastern Highlands province with three and Enga, which reported six cases. Port Moresby General Hospital or POMGEN through the Friends of Friends program received a donation of 40,000 kina from Golden Valley Enterprise. This is to help POMGEN in the fight against the rising number of COVID-19 cases following an appeal the hospital put out seeking assistance from the general public. All donations made to the hospital will be of great use and thus the hospital will be open for the public and services will continue. Port Mosby General Hospital received a total of 40,000 kina from Golden Valley today. Golden Valley is 100% nationally owned and is doing its part in the fight against COVID. Golden Valley Chairman Joshua Nablu is encouraging other businesses and multinationals to do the same. We're hoping that the message can get out and we can assist all these hospitals in trying to as best mitigate the current Pomgen sent out an appeal to the general public a week ago in the event of COVID spike in NCD. The 40,000 kina donated to Pomgen will be used for medical supplies and to assist health workers equip themselves and to continue to provide health care for COVID patients. We've got a lot of cases, a lot of beds, but we don't have enough space. We have limited space, we, uh, we don't have enough, so the funds that they've kindly donated will go towards purchasing the lead. Pomgen Director of Medical Services Dr. Kones Sobi said a medical ward with a 40-bed capacity will be closed and set apart to cater for COVID patients in emergency. Despite the COVID spike, Pomgen will not close its doors. We are closing down one of our medical wards and just basically shifting all those patients to other wards upstairs so that we can cater that uh, bed, uh, was the ward which is about 40-bed 40, 40 capacity to cater for those patients who are, have been diagnosed in emergency waiting for where else to go. The Golden Valley Enterprise is contributing a total of 100,000 kina to three separate provincial health facilities in the country. 60,000 kina is yet to be donated to Engao in Lay and Buka General Hospital. Esther Thailam, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. We'll have more stories after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. 
Nine communities in Hagen district have recently declared their villages open, defecation free. These communities understand the importance of health and hygiene and will throw rubbish or waste at a designated area. Care International, the implementer of the European Union funded WASH program, recently certified them. The nine communities are the Jiga Quipengils, who resides at the Minimp area. They have taken ownership of the EU and UNICEF-funded water and sanitation hygiene program. Each family have built new clean pit toilets to use. Holes were dug to cater for disposal and waste to be burnt. Locals are catching rainwater in bamboos, pipes and other materials to wash hands after using the loo. Uh, rubbish pit, Blomipla. This is a big change. And big change come up in the community, Blomipla. The nine mini communities are among the 200 communities in Hagen Electorate selected to trial the WASH project. The 200 other surrounding communities from the 50 schools selected, Minimp Elementary and Primary Schools have received clean toilets as well. The donor partners want the children to learn to live in clean environment and no hygiene at home and in school. So congratulations to you. Now, my plan is to send this number one community where I'm declaring more dear for all that this is the school plan. EU, UNICEF and the PNG government have selected four districts in PNG to pilot this WASH program. These are Hagen District, Goroka, Nawai and Arob. The local authorities and DDAs are partners in this project to ensure that implementers such as K International are delivering the project successfully. So like Salim, this is the money come. Now we put in condition, long people must put in money, long hand, long... Sample line by come inside na put in Islam money go walk. So far eighteen communities out of the two hundred have been declared open defecation free. Vasanata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. PNG's fisheries industry is receiving more support toward fisheries development. The National Fisheries Authority, or NFA, signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Korea Fisheries Infrastructure Public Agency, or FIPA. The MOU provides a framework for NFA and Korea FIPA to facilitate sharing of best practices in fisheries ports developments. The Memorandum of Understanding between the National Fisheries Authority and Korea Fisheries Infrastructure Public Agency will propel the work of fisheries ports development in PNG. NFA Managing Director John Kasu says the signing was timely as NFA is already working on building important fisheries infrastructure projects around the country. We on an approved uh, Wagang dedicated fisheries wharf that is going to come up in Lee. And then we've got other port developments that are coming in, in Rabaul. And then I think you've heard about the, the, the one in Medang, which is the PMIZ. So that's a, another port development that we may be looking at also under fisheries. The MOU provides a framework for both parties to facilitate the sharing of best practices and exchange of administrative, technical and human resource in fisheries port development. Uh, we can uh, open the window of great opportunity for further development, for the developing our cooperation. And then uh, I am hope we can uh, upgrade our level of cooperation again in many areas. In addition, also explore, develop and implement joint cooperation in fisheries infrastructure development to support the fishing industry in PNG. So we've been having these discussions with uh, the agency, the public agency in Korea, and that has been a number of years that we've been doing it. So finally, as of last year, we agreed and as a result of that, we developed this MOU. And this MOU is a framework that will be between those two agencies mm -hmm. to work. So finally we've agreed on that.
Due to COVID-19 restrictions, the PNG Embassy in Korea hosted and witnessed the signing of the MOU by the President of Korea Fisheries Ports Infrastructure Public Agency in Korea on the 25th of January, and the original copy of the MOU was made available for PNG to sign by the PNG NFA's Managing Director John Kasu. Gertrude Gabi, National MTV News. And turning overseas, half of Italy is set to go back into lockdown from Monday amid fears hospitals in the north are once again becoming swamped with COVID-19 cases. Schools, restaurants and shops have been ordered to shut for three weeks until after Easter. Italy was the first in the world to lock down the entire country last year during the first wave of the pandemic. More than 100,000 people have died from the virus in Italy. And Germany's top disease expert is warning that a third wave of the virus has begun there. Much of Central and Eastern Europe is struggling to cope because of new variants which are spreading quickly. The EU's slow vaccination rollout isn't helping, complicated by several countries suspending use of the AstraZeneca vaccine. It's been nearly two years since an Australian terrorist went on a shooting rampage at two mosques in Christchurch. Today, a national remembrance service was held for the 51 victims. This is the very room inside Al Noor Mosque, where worshippers first faced a hail of gunfire. Today, the walls reverberating instead with prayer. Where blood once stained the carpet, they said a dua for the dead. Your beloved ones did not die. They will not be forgotten. The dignitary sitting alongside the injured and the grieving as the community showed that it is undefeated and unafraid. The biggest change we are on a journey towards is to change our nation. It's been a long, hard two years since the terrorists attacked the Al Noor and Linwood mosques, killing 51 people, injuring 40 others and traumatising many more. And this afternoon, as the grieving moved to Christchurch Arena, the toll of that day was still so clear. Survivors supporting each other, remembering their friends. Inside, speaker after speaker taking the podium for the National Service of Remembrance. taking turns to honour those lost. Their legacy will always remain. We will see their good deeds in all of us. The ripples of grief and sorrow that we endure may never subside, but we have faith in each other as a community and as a country to heal and rebuild ourselves. The grief woven into every sentence. There was nothing they could do for it. The roll call of the 51 who died. Hulam Hussein. Karam Bibi. So long. Muhammad Zeshan Raza. Naeem Rashid. It stretched on for nine minutes. Muhammad Omar Farooq. The public reminded the responsibility to stop hate taking hold again now lies with us all. Knowing that grief takes time and that the scars that have been left are many and that we have a duty to listen. Every person with a part to play to ensure the next generation doesn't face the horrors of hate. Well, it's safe to say the Queen's probably had better weeks amid allegations of racism by her grandson's wife. She took the chance for a brief escape, one that took her out of this world. Oh, good morning. Her husband remains in hospital, her family's in turmoil over the Sussexes, but the Queen was on a video call talking about other worlds. So it is a true honour to be speaking with you just now. They started with Yuri Gagarin, the first person into space way back in 1961. Had the Queen come across him? Well, what do you think? It was very interesting to meet him. What was he like? Russian. <laughs> he didn't speak English. He didn't speak English. No, no, he was fascinating. They talked about things raining down on you, 
apt in a week such as this, though their focus was the meteorite, chunks of which landed in Gloucestershire. Because it looks very really mixed rock. Then they were off to Mars, and the pictures of the four billion year old Martian landscape sent back to Earth from the Mars Perseverance probe. It's pretty rock and strewn, isn't it? Um, unbelievable, really, to, to think one can actually see its surface. School children demonstrated their idea of a rocket blasting off. Like this. <laughs> ah, very successful. For a few moments, a monarch with much to think about was able to escape. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 National MTV News continues with some sporting updates. Centrica Sports up next. Don't go away. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. The Warriors' second NRL season on the road had kicked off on the central coast of New South Wales this afternoon. In a new season with a new direction, it was one of the new faces that opened the Warriors' account in 2021. Here is Siren and he does hit and spin. As old school as you like. The old school showing through in Bailey Sirenin, son of Balmain great Paul Sirenin. And it was the perfect response from him after this. One of Gold Coast star recruits, Tino Fasua Maliawi, climbed into the Warriors' forts. Q, the Warriors' silent assassin. Fasua Maliawi puts it down, rattling shot there from Peter Hiku. A week after these sides drew 12 all in a trial, points were again hard to come by, with the Warriors leading just 6-0 midway through the second half. That was until they crossed again through fit again prop lease on Armau. He'll crash across, there it is. The Warriors would love to go on and win, especially after NRL CEO Andrew Abdo shut down their hopes of playing every game at home next season in a live mid-game interview. You know, it would be wonderful, but I don't think that, that, that we can do that. It's still early days for the Warriors, but the signs in 2021 are promising. And Chukai Sports continues with more after these messages. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. Welcome back to Chukai Sports. In a recent post on social media, PNG football representative Tommy Semi sent a condolence message on the passing of Grand Chief Sir Michael Somari. Semi, who is currently based in New Zealand, reflected on his brief but memorable meeting with the Grand Chief, stating that the nation has not only lost its founding father, but also a leader of great integrity. Yeah, I remember. PNG international footballer Tommy Semi recently posted on social media his condolence message on the passing of Grand Chief Sir Michael Samare. The 27-year-old, who currently plays for the Hamilton Wanderers in the New Zealand Football Championship, joined many other Papua New Guineans living overseas, reflecting on the life of the Grand Chief. Semi stated that the ultimate legacy of Grand Chief Sir Michael Samare, since guiding the country to independence in 1975, was providing the opportunity for later generations of Papua New Guineans to forge their own path in a free and democratic country. Um, representing the, all the footballers in PNG, overseas, wherever they are, just want to take this time and say a condolence message to the Somares family. Uh, prayers with you guys in the States. Uh, no doubt, I know God will be with you guys and give you guys strength and support. I know one day, Easy Peak is my home. Even though I'm brought up in Morobe, in some states I'll make it and pay pay some respect. And for sure, I will do it when I'm back home for my break or whatever time when the borders open. And um, yeah, I want to say thank you. Without you, without you, sir, I don't think I'm gonna put a clothes on right now and be overseas right now. And without you, you won't 
without you we won't be someone who, where we are right now axilovai chukai sports Two young Kiwi snow sporters are on top of the world today, having both won gold medals in their respective events at the World Champs in Espen, Colorado. Zoe Sadalski Sinnott doing what no other slope style snowboarder's done before, shredding her way to back to back world titles. There's definitely a bit of pressure, and I was definitely nervous, but um, I compete best when I'm just in a kind of like a blank, chilling mindset. Let's see if she can land it. Oh, she does land it. Despite two earlier crashes, she came back to nail all of them when it counted. Back to so she, yeah, she lands with a dream run taking Zoe from dead last to first. Uh, it's not exactly a good place to be in and I'm not going to try and do it again, but it definitely feels good to, and such a relief to land it on the last run. But that was just the encore of sorts for New Zealand snow sports, Nico Porteous pulling off his own remarkable run in the free ski halfpipe. That's Nico's older brother Miguel on the mic and he knows just how tough the last month's been. With Nico's training severely affected by a skateboarding injury that landed him in a moon boot. I felt embarrassed, I felt ashamed, I felt all these different emotions and being someone who's in a judge sport, all you can do and all you can control is yourself and your own ability. And so, to, yeah, to go out there and to ski perfect and to ski to the maximum of your ability, it doesn't really get much better, to be honest. Except for the fact his rise to the tops in total sync with Zoe's. We always seem to do well on the same day um, at every event. So I was in drug testing when and peeing in a cup when Nico did his run. So I didn't get to see it till after, but it was so sick. The great, like the best half pipe run ever seen. Two Wanaka kids at heart competing well beyond their years. And that story ends Trukai Sports. The weather details after the break. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. A cloudy with chances of rain showers and thunderstorms in Port Moresby and Alutau. Brief showers, then cloudy weather in Daru. A few rain showers and thunderstorms in Kerama, and easing rain showers and thunderstorms in Popandita. In the Mamasa region, partly sunny with evening showers in late, a shower or two in Middang, a shower or two, then fine weather in Banimo, and partly cloudy with then fine weather in Wewak. In the New Guinea Islands region, mostly fine weather in Lorengau, Kokopora Bao and Kimbe. Some fine, fine weather, then cloudy periods in Buka. Some showers, then fine in Cape Yang. And in the Highlands region, rain showers, then morning fog right across the region in Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. And that's been the news, sport and weather for today, Saturday the 13th of March 2021. Just a reminder to our viewers, the Grand Chief, a tribute hosted by veteran journalist John Eggins, will feature John Momis, former ABG president, right here after the news. From all of us here at MTV, pleasant viewing. Bye for now.